Donald Trump prepares to send kill teams to Mexico for fighting with drug cartels. Republican President frontrunner Donald Trump would send U.S. special forces to fight drug cartels in neighboring Mexico if he returns to the White House, Rolling Stone magazine reported citing sources. According to people who have reportedly discussed the matter with Trump, the former U.S. president has privately endorsed the idea of covertly deploying, with or without the Mexican government's consent, special ops units that would be tasked with missions such as assassinating the leaders and top enforcers of Mexico's powerful drug cartels. The magazine claims that in conversations with close allies, Trump has insisted that the US military has tougher killers than they do, arguing that eliminating the heads of cartels would go a long way toward curbing their operations and striking fear into the hearts of the kingpins. One source recalled the ex-president saying during the discussions that the US government should have a kill list of drug lords, that American special forces would be assigned to eliminate or capture in a potential second Trump administration. Trump has not presented specific details in public about the purported plans the magazine wrote. Previously, he floated different ideas for bombing or invading Mexico in response to the American fentanyl crisis. A synthetic opioid, far more powerful than heroin, fentanyl is responsible for the majority of drug deaths in the US. In 2023, the fentanyl overdose death rate topped 120,000 in a 12-month period for the first time and it remains the leading cause of death among Americans aged 18 to 45. Fentanyl seizures at the US southern border more than tripled in 2023 when compared with the previous year, according to the Drug Enforcement Administration. The agency seized more than 77 million fentanyl pills and nearly 12,000 pounds of fentanyl powder nationwide in the last calendar year, the highest figures ever recorded. The distribution of illegal opioids was attributed to local gangs and drug traffickers who maintain connections with the Sinaloa and Jalisco cartels in Mexico. Trump is far from the only GOP member to suggest sending the US military to fight drug cartels, an idea Mexican President André Manuel López Obrador has staunchly opposed as a violation of Mexican sovereignty. US law enforcement officials have on numerous occasions accused their Mexican counterparts of refusing to cooperate on efforts to target fentanyl labs inside their country. Complete ruins and death the village of Rabotino of Ukraine no longer exists. The village of Rabotino, which became the most famous point of last year's counter-offensive of the Ukrainian armed forces, no longer exists today. Now it is a continuous heap of ruins in the bare steppe where corpses of Russian invaders and burnt equipment of the invaders lie between heaps of broken stones. A visual understanding of what the territory of the village looks like now is provided by a video shot from a drone by soldiers of the 3rd Spartan Operational Brigade. The Ukrainian monitoring project Deep State notes that these images illustrate Russian war tactics. Everything around is strewn with corpses, burnt Russian equipment, but they continue to climb like zombies endlessly. You can see the consequences of Banzai attacks in the form of a knocked out unit or single remains of monsters in trenches, pits and ruins. It's difficult for the Russians to gain a foothold there because they themselves raised everything to the ground, analysts say. It is noted that the situation around the former village of Rabotino remains very complex and dynamic. It's just a continuous grey area, ruins and death that Russians bring with it, they say in deep state. According to data in open sources, the village of Rabotino was founded in 1869, although it existed as a farm at least half a century before that. In those days, Tsarism actively promoted the settlement of the Black Sea region by various peoples, but this village was precisely Ukrainian. According to the 2001 census, about 480 people lived in the village. On March the 6th, 2022, the village was captured by Russian invaders and was under Russian control until August 2023. The battles for the liberation of the village began on August the 7th, 2023, and on August 23rd, it was finally cleared of invaders. During these battles, Ukrainian fighters evacuated the last residents of the village who were still there. Rabotino became the southernmost point of the Ukrainian counter-offensive in this direction. Since the beginning of 2024, the Russians have been making significant efforts to return under their control what is left of the village in order to eliminate on the map all the achievements of the summer counter-offensive of the Ukrainian armed forces.